Hey YouTube, it's Amanda. Today I'm joined by my mentor, Perry Goldman. Hello. <laughs> Okay, so I think this um, video is just going to be focused on you telling your Agile story. How did you find Agile and Scrum and how did you get to where you are? Neat. Well, first of all, I found your channel and I love it. Thank you for letting me know that you're uh, posting videos about Agile and your whole Scrum journey and stuff. It's really cool. I wish I thought of it. So I'll, I'll be staying tuned. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, yeah, and it's been so neat watching you grow into this role too over the last couple of weeks, really. It's been about two, three months that we've known each other, uh, but you are basically my cousin um, now for life. So uh, <laughs> glad to hear that. So hi, my name's Perry Goldman. I'm an Agile training coordinator here at uh, a, a big insurance company called Prudential. We do insurance and um, retirements and investments and that kind of thing, headquartered up in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, so before that, though, I was working at a, a little company called Audible. Audible is that audiobook company, and they are owned by Amazon. So Amazon bought them out back in 2015-ish, uh, 2016, I don't know. A lot of change happened. Uh, Amazon's pretty famous for how they handle things. But uh, one of the big changes that was happening was they said, we need to go agile. We need to just keep up with uh, the rest of the industry, like the, the whole tech industry. So this was a tech firm. Even though they do a lot of cool production stuff, you know, audio, video production, they were really a tech company because they sell technical product even. They sell, you know, this, this intellectual good. Uh, they don't have to go to a factory to make a bunch of books on tape like in the old days or print them on CDs. Instead, it's just, let's make a copy and let that person have it. Let's make a copy and let that person have it. So it's all digital goods now. So anyway, with that, they needed to go agile to stay up with the industry. And I happened to walk into the role just as they were like, oh, by the way, next week, everyone's going to scrum training. And I'm like, what's a scrum? <laughs> and uh, that was that was where the whole journey started was because they wanted to transform their company. They had about 1200 tech people that needed to go through training. And uh, there was no industry training at the time. There was no like how to be a tech person in agile training yet. Uh, there, there was nothing for like team members. All there was, was if you wanted to get certified, you had to be something like a scrum master or product owner. So I said, you know what? Let's make the whole company 1200 scrum masters. And then that way everyone will know what's going on and what they're doing and what the scrum master is actually trying to accomplish here. And uh, everyone can be part of that team. So that's how I got in the door. So that was really interesting, Perry. It seems like a lot of people are actually getting into scrum um, through their company that they're at, they're transitioning from waterfall, I guess, to agile, and yeah. they ask you to be a scrum master. So that was definitely lucky divine intervention, something. Um, what background did you have before coming to Audible or what training have you done before all of that? I was also a transitioning teacher, like so many of you. I was a teacher for the government. I used to teach uh, at an army school. So when people went to basic training in the army and then they were like, okay, now go to your tech school, like go learn your actual job, not just the basic soldier stuff, but like your specialty. If you're a mechanic, if you were a, you know, a um, artillery or something like that, they all have different schools they go to. So I taught at a school out in Arizona and I did a lot of classroom instruction and that was where I kind of fell in love with teaching. After about seven years of that, I needed to move back home and be with my family just because uh, it was getting hard with like a long distance family relationship. So that's what I did. And that was when I transitioned out of teaching because I just couldn't find another like government training instructor job mm -hmm. uh, anywhere on the East Coast. So instead I decided to go back to school. While I was back in school, I learned all kinds of multimedia stuff. I learned how to make digital music. I learned how to do special effects in movies. I learned how to do Photoshop. I learned how to do blah, blah, blah. So like you mix all that stuff together and you end up with instructional design basically, mm. because instructional designers have, each of them has a unique mix of uh, skills that they bring. Some are heavier on the media side, some are heavier on like the, the mental side, you know, mm -hmm. but they've all picked up a lot of skills along the way. And there's no kind of standard tool set for instructional designers. They use whatever tools they have to get the job done. Uh, so that was where I uh, moved next was into instructional design. And that's how I ended up walking into that job I mentioned before. They <laughs> hired me. Um, honestly, I was working at an Amazon warehouse 
straight out of college. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't have anything else going for me. And so um, I was I was out there wrecking my back and, uh, you know, working overnights for 12 hour shifts or whatever. And then I was able to apply apply internally to a job at Amazon. So technically an Amazon subsidiary, which was audible. And they picked me up for that because I did have this now, this tech background from studying computer science and uh, interactive multimedia and stuff in college, plus seven years of classroom experience. So that's why they hired me as a tech trainer. Oh, yeah. Your story is way cooler than mine. <laughs> it's, it's a bit spaghetti, though. You know, it's like <laughs> trying to trace back the spaghetti through a bunch of twists and turns. Uh, yeah, but but that's what I find a lot with people who transition, you know, not only into this, but instructional designers come from so many different areas. Yeah, and then it gave you a lot of really good background and insight um, into the industry. So what was your biggest learning curve, I guess, going from a tech trainer into a scrum mm -hmm. master position? I guess so, the whole company had a learning curve, right? Everyone was a new scrum they master. They did, together. yeah. <laughs> but, and you know, the, the way it was done at the time was a lot more kind of a brute force sort of learning. Um, one of the most difficult things when you're a teacher is to sit through someone else's class, right? So... Mm -hmm. Somebody who is uh, reading off a PowerPoint for eight hours a day for two days straight, because that's how Scrum Master School was taught back then. There was very little hands on. People were asking for it, but they were like, well, you know, it's the, the Scrum Alliance gives us a certain template we got to use. So I'm going with that, you know, and, and there wasn't a lot of a uh, translation of like, how do I make this actually good for adult learners or any kind of learners? So anyway, that wasn't happening at the time. So that was a little painful to watch. And then I didn't actually use much agile at that position, it wasn't until my current position, they hired me as an agile training coordinator because they wanted someone who knew agile and also knew training, you know, and liked mm -hmm. being on camera and delivering classes and could crank out, you know, a couple PowerPoints a week or whatever, whatever was needed for people. So uh, that's because my current company is going through an agile transformation and they have been since 2019. It's such a big company with 40,000 people or whatever, you can't just flip a switch and have it happen overnight. It's like, we got to build a team, build another team, build another team. Now we've got a portfolio. We've got to build another portfolio and so on. It just, it does take time. So uh, for me, it was, I guess the thing I learned, this is kind of, kind of sort of an answer to the learning curve question. It's more like what, what went surprisingly fast with the learning curve, which was, <laughs> My first day being a scrum master, I learned more than I'd learned in years of studying it and years of, you know, holding the certification and doing a little agile here and there. It's like suddenly it's like when you were a teacher and you would sometimes make kids get up in front of the class and teach and they would suddenly yeah. learn like, oh, this is what it feels like to have nobody pay attention to me. <laughs> they learn like, oh, this is what it's like when people are distracted and having side conversations and I need them to learn something, but they're not paying attention because they're talking about something else like. <laughs> it helps them build that objectivity of looking at it from a different point of view. The same thing happens when you become a scrum master, like your first half hour on the job are some, uh, some lessons you'll never forget. Yeah. I, I can definitely relate. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> so you mentioned the scrum Alliance. Mm -hmm. What certifications do you have now? I still have my, uh, certified scrum master from scrum Alliance. And I have a safe scrum master from scaled agile framework.com. So safe is, you know, a kind of bigger version of scrum. It's when you're dealing with, let's say 150 people or more, then you need a way for them to all coordinate to make sure that on these bigger products and these bigger product portfolios and these whole enterprises of products that everybody's releasing on time and uh, everybody's supporting each other. And no one's holding each other back. Yeah. I think a big question that I always get is which certification should people get? I, of course, am a proponent for the Certified uh -huh. Scrum Master, the CSM. You see why, um, right? Yeah. yeah. But um, I'm also getting my PSM cool. soon, eventually. That's the so, Scrum.org one, right? Yes, by Scrum.org. Yeah. How, do, how does one know which certification to go after? Like, what's the different? What benefit do you see of having the CSM than the Safe Scrum Master Cert? We should have like a big get together on this someday and just talk about like the, the what's it like the pros and cons of each one. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to hear what some people say about that. Mine has always been go with certified scrum master first because yeah, safe scrum master. There are some places hiring for that, but why would you need to as an entry level scrum master or what they sometimes list as like junior scrum master, associate scrum master, a lot of those mm -hmm. entry level jobs, they have uh, titles like that. 
why would they ever stick you in charge of like 150 people coordinating different teams and stuff? So like, to me, you wouldn't need to know safe on your first day in the job. Yeah. Like you need to know scrum. You need to know how to work with a team of five to 13 people and coach them and, you know, uh, facilitate things for them and be a change agent outside of the team and help to protect your team and that kind of thing. Like, we're not going to put you in charge of protecting 150 people on your first day on the job. Like, we're going to start you off small. Right. So for me, it's always about CSM first. Honestly, I think the PSM from scrum.org is about the same thing. That just doesn't happen to be the route that I went. So there's nothing against yeah. that. If anyone did that, they're not in any trouble. Uh, and I, <laughs> I am eager to check that one out too. But yeah, even um, like I've got a neighbor. He's never done anything in scrum. He has done, uh, what do you call it? He's been uh, working at a, like a service shop for air conditioner repair and stuff for like the last 20 something years. He's always been the service manager, which is by the way, you've dealt with Kanban people. So, you know, as yeah. soon as I hear a service manager, I'm like, Ooh, you're perfect. Um, <laughs> but he's going to CSM class. He's in there today with Bonsi right now. Uh, he's Aww. actually taking the class today. I convinced him to sign up. So, uh, to try to make a change, you know, to something that's a little yeah. friendlier and more flexible. And that would really leverage his skills as somebody with 20 years of experience in that. Plus he's a, uh, NCAA and like Olympic volleyball judge. So, uh, yeah, he does like <laughs> judging and he works with other judges and he coaches the younger judges. You hear what I'm saying, though, right? You hear where I'm going with this. It's like, yeah. did you say coach? Right. Did you say sometimes you have to make tough decisions and, and sometimes you're dealing with groups that don't agree with each other and you have to find common ground for them? Did you just say that? So, uh, right. I convinced him to sign up for uh, Scrum Master and get out of what he was doing before. So, CSM is my first answer after that you could sure you could leverage the other ones i mean you could become an advanced scrum master through scrum alliance or the next yeah. one above that i forget what it is or you can kind of go sideways and say i'm going to try being a product owner for a while with the eventual goal of becoming an agile coach i mean honestly i think if you've been a scrum master for two or three years you could become an agile coach because now you know how teams work and now you yeah. can coach everybody on those roles really well so yeah there's a couple different routes after that but just to start i'd always say certified scrum master personally. So did your current company encourage you to get your safe scrum master cert or did you just do that on your own? At what point did they you get encouraged that? It. Yeah, because we are like a, I don't really remember if it's 10 or 20 or 30 or 40,000 people at our company, but it's huge. <laughs> uh, even if even 10,000 is huge. Imagine trying to coordinate like, you know, 10,000 students in a classroom or something. It's just about as chaotic. So uh, we are using something very similar to safe. It's just, we had to to adjust to the little to be a better fit for our company so uh, that is our we have our own framework that we use but it is 90 percent of it is scrum and safe based anyway and that um was why we said you know we don't really have an industry standard for our framework like we we don't have a certification people can get but we want people to have that opportunity to like professionally develop build their mastery you know learn things kind of learn the original terminology because we've changed some of the terminology at work. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's why we said, let's do a program where we'll send product owners to, you know, safe pop them. They call it uh, product owner, product manager training, POPM. Mm -hmm. uh, so they can go to pop them training. If they're in a product owner role, uh, they can go to uh, SSM, which is safe scrum master. If they're in a scrum master role. And then there's a bunch of others in between with like RTEs and, um, you know, CPOs. Uh, well, I'm sorry. Uh, product managers I told you about, uh, solution train engineers, release train engineers, stuff like that, or even our leadership. They're getting to go to um, Cal E training, which is that certified agile leadership essentials training. Uh, mm -hmm. So th the opportunity came up for me because we had a bunch of people we were putting through a pilot program for safe scrum master. And I went and it was really mind opening. <laughs> <laughs> not not just eye opening, but you really have to open your mind to right. like, how would this how do 15 or so scrum teams coordinate when you want them to all be independent you want them to be empowered to make their own decisions and yet you want them to all somehow coordinate like how do we do that and safe is the answer to that one okay that's that's interesting <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah a challenge yeah it's an interesting challenge and that's what they came up with they really well, did base it on scrum so that's pretty cool like scaled scrum in a way yeah well, I'm glad that you are in charge of that and not me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you remember we've, we've looked at the, if anyone out there goes to scaled agile framework.com, uh, the first thing that'll pop up is like the big safe diagram and it's interactable. You can click on anything in it, but it's big. It's like, if this is the whole screen scrums down here, 
you know the rest is like what happens at level above scrum and what happens at the level above that yeah yeah it's yeah. It, it it's is cumbersome for and i'd sure. rather see somebody be a regular scrum master of a scrum team for a couple of years before they attempt that uh yeah, that, that seems like a very big undertaking. Well, for the sake of time, I am just going to say thank you so much for joining me this time. We will most likely need to have a follow-up interview. My One pleasure. of my favorite things about you, Perry, is that you're so selfless with your time. And you're really, really good at just demonstrating how transferable our skills are as teachers or even non-teachers are towards Scrum. So... Thank you for your time. Good. We will definitely yeah. follow up and talk to you later. It's Bye. been such a pleasure working with you and talking to you today. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.